What is up, everybody? It's your boy, Phil Shocker, the Nice Tech Dog here, and we are back for the semi finals of the APA Low Tier League. I'm not going to lie to you guys, it's nerve wracking because if we win this game, we have a chance to, on a technicality level, go and win back to back APA championships. We lose this game. We have a sense of pride that we got redemption from the last time we were in APA low tier from basically missing out of playoffs just because they didn't want to do the game to now being in the semifinals. So I'm super happy. Win or lose, I'm going to be all right with this. I do hope I win, obviously, but nonetheless, excuse me. I think this is a. Uh, a game we can win. We are facing Cody, who we did face in the regular season. I think we might have had this team for Cody week six and stuff like that. And Cody, he just beat us. I didn't bring the right stuff. I over prepped for some things and everything like that. So I am ex hopefully hoping we can pick up a W and we can be able to go on and go to the finals. So with that being said, let's break down this matchup. So Cody's team is still consisted of Honchko. Uh, Honchko, Heracross, Flygon, Vaporeon, Spiritomb, Pyroar, Reggie Rock, Alolan Raichu, Gramble, Roselia, and Alolan, Alolan, God dang it, Galarian Stunfisk. So let's go over the team he brought versus us last time. So last time he was potentially either Scarf or Banded Honchko with Moxie. I would assume he may or may not have been defog, so he could have maybe have been Scarf, maybe. I think I've seen him run Scarf defog on Honchko before. So definitely kind of something to factor in with that. He was Scarf Heracross, and if I think the rest of his moves are correctly, he had either Rock Slash as Earthquake, and then either had Earthquake with it or Knock Off or like that. And he was Moxie Heracross with the Choice Scarf, which we did assume, did get correct that he would have to be in order to beat some things on my team, so definitely something to note with that. He brought Flygon. I would assume it was either Dragon Dance Flygon with three attacks or it was something else potentially. But he had Earthquake Dual Wing and I'm going to assume he had Dragon Claw. We did get a crit with our Rackman that guaranteed kill this thing last time. So definitely something for us to kind of put in the factor right there. But Flygon, I guess, was meant to be a little bit bulky offensive or something like that. But I felt like with DD leftovers, I didn't think it was a really smart brand of 10. He brought Regirock, which we didn't really have the best prepare for. Regirock was just there to just sit there and take hits. It wasn't a stall vest. It was more of kind of semi-specially defensive slash kind of just a sit there rock with Rock Slide, Toxic, and Stealth Rock. I do expect the same Regirock set again. Spirit Tomb, I think, will come back to be the same set as is a set that I cannot touch with my Persian since he knew that Persian did not have anything. And I think he showed a different move. I don't know. But he had Protect Toxic Pain Split, so easily he was a stall set. So he either had Foul Play or a Dark Move or a Ghost Move. And he had Pressure, so definitely something that we're going to have to be very careful with knowing that. And he brought Rocky Helmet Vaporeon with Flip Turn, Protect Skull. I would assume his last move was probably Wish or Toxic, one of the two. And he had Flip Turn for Pivoting. He had a Protect to go along with the Toxic Skull. And he had Skull to try to go for Burn and stuff like that. That's the team he brought versus us last time. I can see him bringing at least five of the six back. I could see him swapping one or two things out, depending on what it is. But when it comes to this matchup, I do expect him to bring back Honchkrow, Heracross, Flygon, Vaporeon, and Spiritomb. Those five, I know for a fact he'll bring back. Those five we dealt with a little strong, hard, heavily, and everything like that. I think Pyroar is coming this time. I think knowing that Durant is such a massive threat versus his team, he needs something like Pyroar to kind of get involved and try to stop him. So I do think Pyroar has a good shot at showing up in this matchup this time. But being that being May, I don't think he does bring the stun fast. I don't think he brings Rosalia. There could be a chance he might bring Gramble this time, but I don't think he will. I do think he has a good shot at still bringing Raichu to this matchup, which we were predicting him to bring last time. And I do think Regirock could actually come back as well if it's the event some set to just kind of neutralize and do anything else he can against my so we have brought a very different team this time. We are bringing two new members to this matchup, and we're changing up pretty much every set we had last time, except technically for one, but we're changing up the move set. And there's one set we actually, I don't think, literally touched. So let's go and break down the new team. And I actually forgot to make this uh, shiny. So hold on. That, how the heck is that shiny? 
And as we're kicking it off a squeak, rest in peace, my baby girl that's up there. We have Choppleberry here, and I actually am going to make sure we are unnerved. That way, our berry, their berries can't trigger when I try to uh, use something like that. Um, I could have been still scarred for this matchup, but I feel like Choppleberry is really good because this lets me sit in front of a uh, Heracross, which is really good. Plus, if Heracross is weakened, I can go for the Body Slam, Navikeo, or go for the Play Rough in Navikeo, depending on that. I have Facade this time, so that way, when we get if Spiritomb is in a position where I can get rid of it and knock it out, I have Facade Boost to Toxic or anything like that, which is really, really good. But otherwise, I do think a Persian has a phenomenally good matchup here. His normal resist is very non existent at current point. I mean, Spirit Tomb is there, but we have ways around Spirit Tomb with this set. We are going to run the Chopperberry again, though, because I do think Chopperberry is the best answer we need. We are going to actually run a max speed, max attack set with Adamant to outspeed Flygon. Um, I could have ran Jolly in running out speed for Pyroar, or just for uh, Flygon and then being able to just smack something harder with it. But I think this set is more powerful because I want to hit extremely hard this matchup. Last time, he just brought Annoying Bulk, and I want to break his bulk down as hard as I can. I'm actually bringing back Chainsaw this week, and Chainsaw, I actually now think about, we'll get rid of this for Rock Slide. Or Rock Tomb. I think we're going to actually go rid of Rock Tomb, just for safety conditions. But we're bringing a Durant this week with 88 HP, Max Attack, Adamant 168 in the speed with a G Adamant Nature with a Choice Scarf. This outspeeds everything except Choice Scarf Flygon, which he wasn't last time. I don't expect him to be this time. And I don't expect him to be Scarf on Pyro. I do expect him to be Specs, knowing that our Scarf actually can outspeed him. So definitely something to note with that. But Durant can win us this game if we land our hits. First impression, we have to hope doesn't screw us like it did last time. Otherwise, we have to rely on X Scissor, Iron Head, and Rock Tomb. Now, I could have brought a different set. I could have brought Agility and then Life Orb, three attacks potentially, but I like the idea of Choice Scarf so that way I can kind of just be able to control speed in this matchup and that I can kind of fake him out from clicking First Impression because that's why we have First Impression on this set. It's to kind of fake him out and think we're the Adamant set this time or to fool him that we're Jolly Banded this time instead of an Adamant Banded. So definitely something to kind of trick him around that. I think this is the better set to run this time. So I'm hoping it's going to pay off. We're bringing Airhead this time. Last time he only one stop to Airhead, and that was literally just going to be the Spirit Tomb. We're going to go past that this week. And Driplim has been an underrated slept on threat that a lot of people have lost to. And I think every time we've brought in Driplim, I think we've won a game, I think. I could be very well wrong on that. But I think we have, but... I don't remember. We're in a very semi-risky set, but I think it's a very good set that works 100% so well. We're going to run Willow with Sub, Hex, and Strength Sap. We are running this set because it basically can wall a lot of defensive offensive pressure on him's team. And plus, Driplum literally can just be a big noise. It's, again, he does not have a good answer to the spammable attacks of Ghost. Again, if he does not bring... Whatever. And anything, if we can not see Pyroar, Driplin wins this game. We are going to run the Culverberry in case of knockoff, Dark Pulse, any dark move, in, in, especially in front of Honscrow, where we can either Willow Honscrow or Strength Staff Honscrow. But if we Willow as Honscrow, Honscrow is not a problem. Now, I do need to be slightly careful about any potential Willow as Gut shenanigans from Heracross. But I feel like the Moxie set with Heracross is definitely going to be better versus us in the long run. So. Definitely expect Driplim to be that piece that we need to win this game. And I think this sets the key idea. We're running on 36 in HP, 24 in defense, and 16 in depth. That's our bulk for this matchup. I'm running a little bit more of a physical bulk than a special bulk because I don't think I need special bulk. I just need physical bulk. And we're going to run actually a good amount of special attack missile now. We are technically running the same in speed, but speed actually is boosted by two points. The speed, once we get our unburden boost, makes us faster than every single thing on his team guaranteed. So that's going to be something that's going to be a big factor going into this matchup. So really hoping that's going to pay off for us. We're bringing Perfume. We're bringing the exact same set because it works. I think we changed up the IVs and EVs though in this matchup. We're running 120 in HP, 100 in the defense, max special attack with a modest nature, and 28 to depth. I think this time around, we got to play around a little smarter and hopefully getting Trick Room up and either bang on a Toxic Mist 
or we just go with the offensive of what's in front of us first is trying to set up and going for the damage output there. And also we can actually have the option to switch things around and kind of fool around and mess around with that type of stuff. But I think this set with Aromatisse really looks good. His fairy resistance is literally limited because it has like one Pokemon. So I definitely think this is the way to go. I'm actually bringing Shepard this time. Now I didn't bring Shepard last time because I was really worried about Flygon. But the more I felt like it, if I just get an agility up and Flygon's not a choice card, Flygon's not a problem towards me. I don't care about Flygon. And his fairy type, I kind of don't care about as well because I can always take one hit again and just knock it out with a Thunderbolt potentially. Or if I get my agility up before it comes in, I can two shot it with Thunderbolt. So that from something to kind of keep in the factor there. So we are in Dragon Ball Thunderbolt, Cotton Garden, and Agility. Agility basically makes sure that I am faster than Flygon, which is really great. And I really expect that speed to come in handy. Again, I don't care if not real speed and pyro or pyro can't touch me. But basically, once I get my agility up, I am faster than Flygon, which is really, really good. I don't think I can be faster than any potential Scarfers on his team. And even if I wanted to, I don't really want the damage output. We're running max HP, 76 defense, 84 special attack. So we're running a little more physical bulk with the Cotton Guard set. If we can get that set to pop off for us, it's going to be really good. And then Thunderbolt plus Dragon Balls literally just destroy his team if we get the predictions right. And the good thing is that once we get an agility up, we don't have to make predictions. We can literally just spam attack, which is really good. And we're bringing back Skazer this week, or Skazar, I meant. And we're running Life Dwarf, Agility, 3 attacks. We're not running Dark Coverage. And Dark Coverage... That could cost us. It could. And the more I think about it, I really don't need Thunder Fang when I have Ice Fang. So they're going to do the exact same thing. So I think I will put uh, Knock Off on here, actually. But nonetheless, we have Ice Fang, Poison Jab, Knock Off, Agility, 3 attacks, 120 in HP, Max Attack, Adamant, 52 in Defense, 84 Speed. 84 Speed. The Speed lets me make sure that I am faster than, than Scarf Flygon, which is really good. And then there's other Scarfers. So literally nothing outspeeds me unless for some reason he brings Scarf Raichu, which I think is the only possibility said he can maybe have to outspeed me. I don't know. I think we could still outspeed Scarf Raichu, but I don't know. But nonetheless, uh, Drapion in this matchup is really good. Last time we didn't have coverage for Flygon because otherwise I would have been Shookaberry, Ice Fang, killed that Flygon way sooner. I could have had uh, my Rackman in the back, and I probably could have maybe won against the Heracross there. Or I could have still lost 1-0. Or I would have been able to have the chance to go into Durant and then get the 1-0 victory with Curse and Impression. Because that's something that's going to factor in there as well. But Ice Fang really just there for the Drapion. It also actually helps me hitting the, uh, the Haunch Crow as well. But Poison Jab plus Knock Off does not have a really good amount of switchings on his team. Um, I don't think he's going to go with the Will of a set again. I think he's going to go with Toxic. So if Drapion is in against uh, Spiritomb and Spiritomb can't touch it, then Drapion kind of just sits in front of it and just beats it 1v1 going for anything we have there and i do think drapion has a really good matchup and i think we can actually plow through his team very offensively now this team is definitely built to be a little less bulky than last time it's been pure offensive and i think that's the way we got to break down his team is just breaking down some of his bulk and just going smash head hard but that's the team guys again if we lose this if we lose this match I'll feel a little upset, but, you know, we made a good strive in trying to win our second back-to-back -back APA championship. But if we win this matchup, we will be heading to the finals to where we could be receiving our back-to-back, first-ever back-to-back APA championship titles, which could be super huge. And if we can just make it to the finals in general, it will make me feel happy. But that's the team. Thank you all so much for watching. Leave a like, give it a raise. Subscribe if you are new. And get hyped for the semifinals matchup. But until next time, I am Pro Shocker the Nice Hedgehog, and I will see you guys next time. Peace.